Hello guys, on Laravel Daily website, we continue upgrading older courses one by one to the latest Laravel 11. So I want to introduce you one of the newest upgrades is Laravel 11 multi-tenancy. It is upgraded to Laravel 11 as a text-based course with 22 lessons and 17,000 words. And today in this video, I want to read to you or explore together the lesson about multiple databases for multi-tenancy using specifically a package of tenancy for laravel.com or officially it is ArcTechX tenancy because before upgrading this course i asked on twitter what questions do you have about multi-tenancy and by far the most popular question was single database or multiple database and the course covers both approaches but first before we talk about how a lot of people question why why you would need multiple databases so database for each tenant separately. So I've tried to answer that in this course lesson. And let me summarize. Basically, multiple databases is usually a business decision. So you need separate databases for compliance, for legally compliant requirement or privacy issues or something like that. So if you're a well-known company, for example, like Microsoft, you wouldn't want to share the same database with your competitors, right? Just to minimize the risk of data leaks. Of course, on that level in the enterprise, the full solution would be probably separate clouds and installations of the software itself separately, not only the database. But we're talking about more simple solution of single Laravel code base, multiple databases and connecting to specific tenant database as needed. But also multiple databases can be a technical solution, technical decision. For example, if you have one bigger client that needs some separate individual scaling solutions, like more servers or more powerful servers, you can separate the databases, have them separately, not only for serving that client, but also protecting other smaller clients from performance issues. So each client would work with their smaller or bigger database. So it looks cool, but it has disadvantages as well. It's pretty complex to set up and maintain, and I will show you that in a minute. I will read all that lesson, how to set that up. And also it is harder to deploy changes. For example, if you want to have some change in the database, you have to run migrations on multiple databases, which is also configurable, but still adds some load to any deployment process. So there are pros and cons, but in general, my personal experience is this. If you don't really know why you need multiple databases, you probably don't need them. But if you do know that you do need them, let's see how. We will install the package of Arctech X Tenancy, which previously was called by the name of the creator, Stancil Tenancy, and we need to add specific tenancy service provider. I will actually read that lesson pretty quickly. I do advise you to read the official documentation of the package with all the details. For this video, I just want you to understand the concept of routing per tenant and stuff like that. Next step is to have the main database configured and then make it as a central connection in the configuration of the package. Then also for this case, I disabled your UID generator for each tenant and made the ID as a primary key for tenants. So in the central database, there's a table of list of all the tenants. And then I decided to make the changes for the domains. So each tenant would have its own subdomain with foreign ID to that tenant ID. So instead of string and UUID, I decided to have a foreign key. Then we need to define the tenancy model. So make model tenant. It should extend base tenant from the package and implement tenant with database. That's one of the main things. And we specify the model in the config. Then in the newest Laravel 11 in Bootstrap app, we need to add this code. So we need to register a lot of separate route files for each of the central domains. This comes from config and then for each of those central domains, we generate the route group with routes web. And also we have routes web for routes tenant. And again, in Laravel 11, it comes in bootstrap app file in using section instead of the default routes web. Next in the .env file, we need to define the session domain for the main domain and then the routes. 
So in the routes web, we remove all the routes that we have for manage, for example, tasks and projects. In this course, we're creating a project to manage tasks and project by tenant. So we don't need that anymore in routes web, but we do need that in routes tenant. So there will be something dot tenancy dot test slash these routes by subdomain. And that subdomain behavior is initialized with initialized tenancy by subdomain from the package. This is one of the things that package helps us with to automate the subdomain logic. Then we need to assign user to tenant. This is Laravel part. We create the migration with many to many relationship and define the belongs to many. Then we need to register a new tenant when the new user registers. We're using Laravel breeze in this case and we define subdomain here in the form it is input with ID and name subdomain and then in the register controller in case of Laravel breeze it's this controller and this method we create a tenant with our model that we created remember then we create the domain for that tenant and then we assign the new user to that tenant and then we immediately redirect to that subdomain. Next, we need to make a change in migrations. Main migrations folder of Laravel should contain only global migrations like users, tenants, domains, and tenant user. Then each tenant's local database should be in database migrations tenant subfolder. Then in the tenancy service provider of that package, you can define the job pipeline to create a new database to migrate the new database. This will come from database migrations tenant and maybe if you want, seed the database. In this case, we commented seeds out. So this will happen automatically on tenant created event. And this is another thing what package helps us with. The default name of that database would be with prefix and suffix configured in the config tenancy PHP. And for user registration to work, we need to also add central connection to the main user model of the global Laravel project. For the assets, we need to uncomment Vite bundler in the config of the tenancy. And then we have something like this, correctly rendered Tailwind CSS. Also to prevent access to a different tenant, we need to add scope sessions to the routes of tenant. And that's about it. We've set up multiple databases with subdomains in Laravel project. On top of that, you need some DevOps work to configure wildcard subdomains on Nginx or Apache level. This is kind of outside of Laravel scope. You can Google how to do that. But in this video, I wanted you to understand the basic concept of how to set up that package. Basically, you configure quite a lot of small details, but then each of your tenants has their own separate database. What do you think about this approach? Maybe I missed something here. What do you think about single versus multiple databases? What happened in your experience if you work with multiple databases? Let's share their experience and discuss in the comments below. And if you want the full course where we talk about simple user multi-tenancy in single database with teams or without teams with invitation system, just stream teams, spotty multi-tenancy and other stuff, I will link the course in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.